ever felt belittled by a colleague or hurt by a family member's comments, it's time to say bye-bye to disrespect and master your emotional immunity with these 12 powerful lessons. Disrespect can come in many forms, from condescending comments to backhanded compliments. Today, we're diving into practical lessons that will help you build emotional immunity and navigate difficult situations with confidence. The first step to building emotional immunity is acknowledging your emotions. When someone disrespects us, it's natural to feel hurt, angry or frustrated. But often we try to push those feelings down, pretend they don't exist, or tell ourselves we shouldn't feel that way. The problem with this is that emotions don't just disappear when we ignore them. They fester and grow stronger beneath the surface. They can manifest in unhealthy ways like lashing out at others or withdrawing from our relationships. Acknowledging our emotions means giving ourselves permission to feel them fully without judgment. It means sitting with the discomfort, naming it and understanding where it's coming from. This can be an incredibly vulnerable process, but it's also incredibly powerful. When we allow ourselves to feel our emotions, we create space for healing and growth. Think of it this way. Imagine you have a physical wound. You wouldn't just ignore it and hope it goes away on its own, would you? You'd clean it, bandage it, and give it time to heal. Our emotional wounds deserve the same care and attention. When we acknowledge them, we're essentially tending to our emotional well-being. Setting clear boundaries is crucial for protecting our emotional well-being. Think of boundaries as your personal fence, defining what you will and will not tolerate from others. When we don't have clear boundaries, we're essentially leaving the gate wide open for others to walk all over us. This doesn't mean you have to become an unyielding fortress. It's about communicating your needs and expectations in a respectful and assertive manner. It's about saying no when you need to and, and not feeling guilty about it. Start by identifying your non-negotiables, those values and principles that are core to who you are. What are you absolutely not willing to compromise on? Once you're clear on your boundaries, communicate them directly and respectfully to the people in your life. Remember, setting boundaries isn't about controlling others, it's about taking care of yourself. When you set clear boundaries, you're sending a powerful message that you respect yourself and your needs and that you expect others to do the same. Self-care is not selfish. It's an act of self-preservation. It's about prioritizing your well-being replenishing your energy and showing yourself the same kindness and compassion you would offer a loved one. When we experience disrespect, it can be draining on our emotional reserves. That's why it's crucial to practice self-care consistently, especially during challenging times. Self-care looks different for everyone. Maybe it's taking a long bath, reading a good book, spending time in nature or listening to your favorite music. The key is to find activities that nourish your mind, body and soul. When you prioritize self-care, you're sending a powerful message to yourself that you are worthy of love, care, and attention. Recognize your power. One of the most liberating realizations we can have is that we have the power to choose our responses. We can't control what others say or do, but we can control how we react to them. This doesn't mean suppressing our emotions or pretending that disrespect doesn't bother us. It's about recognizing that we always have a choice in how we respond to difficult situations. We can choose to react with anger and defensiveness, or we can choose to respond with calmness and composure. We can choose to internalize the disrespect and let it erode our self-worth, or we can choose to challenge it and reaffirm our value. This shift in perspective can be incredibly empowering. It reminds us that we are not defined by the actions or words of others, but by our own choices and responses. Uh, focus on your strengths. When we're feeling disrespected, it's easy to get caught up in a spiral of self-doubt and negativity. We start questioning our worth, our abilities and our judgment. That's why it's crucial to counteract this negativity by focusing on our strengths. What are you good at? What are you passionate about? What are some of your accomplishments that make you proud? Take some time to reflect on your strengths and write them down. When you find yourself feeling down or discouraged, revisit this list and remind yourself of all the amazing qualities you possess. Focusing on your strengths isn't about being arrogant or boastful. It's about counteracting negativity with positivity and reminding yourself of your worth, especially when it's being challenged. 
Remember, you have unique gifts and talents to share with the world. Surround yourself with positive people. The people we surround ourselves with have a profound impact on our emotional well-being. If we are constantly surrounded by negativity, criticism and disrespect, it's going to take a toll on our self-esteem and our ability to navigate difficult situations. That's why it's crucial to cultivate a supportive network of positive people who uplift and encourage us. These are the people who believe in us, who see our worth and who champion our dreams. Spend time with people who make you feel good about yourself, who inspire you to be your best self and who support you through thick and thin. These relationships are invaluable for building emotional resilience and navigating life's inevitable challenges. On the other hand, if there are people in your life who consistently bring you down or disrespect you, it might be time to re-evaluate those relationships. You deserve to be surrounded by people who lift you up, not tear you down. Practice assertive communication. Assertive communication is a powerful tool for setting boundaries, expressing our needs and navigating disrespect effectively. It's about communicating directly and respectfully without being passive or aggressive. When we communicate passively, we tend to avoid conflict, suppress our needs and allow others to walk all over us. On the other hand, when we communicate aggressively, we can come across as hostile, demanding and disrespectful ourselves. Assertive communication strikes a balance between these two extremes. It's about expressing our needs and opinions clearly and confidently, while also being respectful of the other person's perspective. This might involve using I statements to express your feelings and needs, setting clear boundaries and saying no when necessary. The more you practice, the more confident and comfortable you'll become in expressing yourself effectively. Develop empathy. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another person. It's about stepping outside of our own perspective and trying to see the world through their eyes. While it's not always easy to empathize with someone who's disrespected us, it can be a powerful tool for navigating these situations with grace and understanding. When we can understand where the other person is coming from, even if we don't agree with their behavior, it can help us to respond with more compassion and less reactivity. This doesn't mean condoning their behavior or letting them off the hook. Empathy allows us to see the humanity in others, even when they're not showing us theirs. Cultivate gratitude. Gratitude is a powerful antidote to negativity and resentment. When we focus on the good in our lives, it's harder to dwell on the bad. When we're feeling disrespected, it's easy to get caught up in a spiral of negative thoughts and emotions. We start focusing on everything that's wrong with our lives and we forget about all the good. That's why it's crucial to cultivate gratitude as a daily practice. Take some time each day to reflect on the things you're grateful for no matter how small they may seem, when we focus on the good, our perspective shifts. Learn to forgive. Forgiveness is not about condoning hurtful behavior. It's about freeing ourselves from the burden of resentment. When we hold on to anger, bitterness and resentment, we're essentially allowing the past to poison our present. Forgiveness is a process and it's not always easy. It takes time, patience and a willingness to let go of the pain and anger we're holding on to. Start by acknowledging the hurt and anger you feel. Don't try to suppress these emotions or pretend they don't exist. Allow yourself to feel them fully. Remember, forgiveness is not about the other person, it's about you. Take responsibility for your emotions. While we can't control the actions of others, we can control our own reactions. Taking responsibility for our emotions means acknowledging that we have a choice in how we respond to difficult situations. This doesn't mean suppressing our emotions or pretending that disrespect doesn't bother us. It's about recognizing that we always have a choice in how we react. We can choose to react with anger and defensiveness, or we can choose to respond with calmness and composure. We can choose to internalize the disrespect and let it erode our self-worth, or we can choose to challenge it and reaffirm our value. This shift in perspective can be incredibly empowering. It reminds us that we are not defined by the actions or words of others, but by our own choices and responses. 
Maintain a growth mindset. A growth mindset is the belief that our abilities and intelligence are not fixed, but can be developed through effort, learning and perseverance. This mindset is essential for building emotional resilience and navigating challenges effectively. When we have a growth mindset, we see challenges as opportunities for growth and learning. We embrace setbacks as part of the process and we don't let them define us. Instead of getting bogged down by self-doubt and negativity, we ask ourselves, what can I learn from this experience? And how can I use this to grow stronger? It helps us to see the lessons in our struggles and it empowers us to move forward with greater resilience and determination. Building emotional immunity, your journey to resilience. Let's look at how these lessons can be applied to modern living through Jane's story. Jane often felt belittled by her boss and doubted her abilities due to her partner's constant criticism. She felt trapped in a cycle of negativity and disrespect. Determined to reclaim her power, Jane started by acknowledging her emotions. She allowed herself to feel the hurt and anger without judgment. She then set clear boundaries with both her boss and her partner, communicating her needs and expectations assertively. To replenish my emotional reserves, I prioritized self-care. I started practicing yoga, meditating, and spending time in nature. I also made a conscious effort to focus on my strengths, reminding myself of my accomplishments and talents. Jane surrounded herself with positive friends who uplifted her and celebrated her successes. She practiced assertive communication, expressing her needs and boundaries clearly and respectfully. Furthermore, Jane worked on developing empathy towards her boss and partner, recognizing that they too were fighting their own battles. She practiced gratitude, focusing on the positive aspects of her life and began the process of forgiving past grievances. Adopting a growth mindset, I started viewing challenges as opportunities for personal growth. I embraced feedback as a chance to learn and improve, rather than as personal attacks. Within months, Jane noticed a profound shift in her emotional well-being. She was more confident, resilient, and could handle disrespect with poise. To summarize, mastering emotional immunity involves 12 key lessons. Acknowledge your emotions, set clear boundaries, practice self-care, recognize your power, focus on your strengths, surround yourself with positivity, practice assertive communication, develop empathy, cultivate gratitude, learn to forgive, take responsibility for your emotions and maintain a growth mindset. By incorporating these lessons into your daily life, you'll navigate difficult situations with confidence and poise. Thanks for watching. Share your experiences with disrespect or emotional challenges in the comments below. What strategies have you used to build emotional immunity? Let's support each other on this journey to emotional resilience. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos on personal development and emotional growth.